Give that applause going for your nice competitor, the very funny, the hilarious Ryan Williams! Yeah. All right, everybody! Uh, do not let my unironed shirt from winners fool you. I'm actually not doing well financially. Uh, yeah, I live in Vancouver. It's a very expensive city. I uh, have lived there for five years, and in those five years, I have moved 15 different times. Yeah, that is a lot of times to move if you are not an intravenous drug user. I'm aware of that. Uh, I have also had 28 roommates. That is more than double the sexual partners I have had. I'm less afraid of running into a bad one night stand and more afraid of running into that guy whose French press I broke. That would be awkward. And one time I had to move on super short notice. I didn't have access to a vehicle. Uh, I only had $9.75. And I did something I would not wish on anyone in this room. Uh, I moved on the city bus. Yeah, this is the darkest joke you're gonna hear tonight. Some of you may be wondering to yourselves like, oh, I wonder how many trips it takes on the number 49 bus in Vancouver to move. It takes fucking eight! Do you know how many trips it takes before you reevaluate every decision you've ever made in your life and contemplate suicide? Just one. <laughs> the worst part was I had the same bus driver for three of those trips. Yeah, the first time he was like, uh, this is pretty weird, but this isn't like bus weird, so I'll allow it. I realize I'm in Calgary. You guys might not know what bus weird is. When you see someone waiting for the bus in the wintertime, you're like, oh, that guy for sure has a DUI. Uh, but bus weird is like, oh, I just realized the word this guy is muttering over and over again is murder. That's bus weird. The second time I got on with my stuff and he was a little more thrown off. He was like, oh, this sad man with the blue Ikea bags full of clothing. Looks a lot like that sad man from earlier with the microwave full of clothing. The third time he just looked me dead in the eye, saw into my soul and was like, are you fucking robbing someone? I tried to get my finances in order a couple of years ago. I tried to get a job in your wonderful province. I tried to get a job on the oil rigs, but I could not get a job on the Alberta oil rigs because when I was 18 years old, I did a very shitty thing. I got a DUI. And because of this one DUI, I could not get a job on the oil rigs because they were like, yeah, you need at least like three DUIs to work on the oil rigs. <laughs> Preferably a coke problem. We'll let it slide if you fight a guy. <laughs> but money's important right now. I'm getting a little older and my parents are getting older and I'm at that age where I have to talk to my sister about, okay, what are we gonna do with our parents? Like, are we gonna put them in an old folks home one day? And my bank account says, nope. Uh, <laughs> And then I thought about it, I tried to justify it. I was like, well, you know what? My parents are baby boomers, and that's the first generation as a society that we watch take their parents that fought in fucking wars, and they put them in old folks' homes. Like, what the fuck do the baby boomers think are gonna happen to them? <laughs> Sorry, I should specify, this joke only applies to white people. <laughs> Yeah, if you're offended right now, you mayonnaise-eating honky fuck, uh, we're the only ethnicity that does that. You will never find anyone more cocky than an elderly East Indian woman watch her old white neighbor be taken away to the old folks' home. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. I'm gonna continue to be a burden on my children's marriage. Uh, Fucking joke! God damn it, it's the most important set of my fucking life. I forgot my fucking joke. Fuck's sakes. Oh, 
oh yeah, I played football for 11 years and had a lot of concussions. <laughs> yeah, that joke is great because it finds out, uh, it's about head injuries and it finds out who's a little slow in the crowd, huh? Concussions are scary stuff though. Like I used to coach high school football and now I'll just lie awake, just tortured, thinking about how many young promising electricians I just <laughs> turned into drywallers. <laughs> And I'm allowed to make that joke. I am currently unemployed. Uh, but one thing I don't miss about football is the locker room, whether as a coach or as a university player. The male locker room is the most disgusting place that people talk about sex. There's a word for it. It's called locker room talk. It's vulgar, it's disgusting. The most disgusting, descriptive, vile place that people talk about sex is the male locker room. Or at least I used to think that until I was sat next to women having brunch. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys have been great. Have a great night. Ryan Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it going for Ryan Williams.